there's a geological fault that runs right through Kenmore. As a matter of fact, it runs a lot more than just through Kenmore. It goes nearly up to Kilcoy, all the way up the top here, through a bunch of interesting geology. You drive over all the time, you would know it was there. Let's have a deeper dive into the Kenmore Fault. Victoria Park folks got the T-Rox chopper fired up. Can anyone tell me what that Lotus symbol's for in the comments if you know? Just heading over here, there's the northern portal for the Cross River Rail there. Eh? It's a little more finished than that now. This metadata's a little bit old. There's the grammar school out across Roma Street Park lands, so William Jolly Bridge, lovely bridge, Maryvale Bridge. Let's just spin around and have a look at these bridges. There's that new bridge. Can anyone tell me why that named that after Ted Bulpit's statue in his front yard? In the comments if you know. So let's head up the river. She's not looking too brown down here at the moment, but it uh, depends when they took this image. So no surprises to know the video is called the Kenmore Fault, so we're going to Kenmore. But first of all, we're gonna stop at Fig Tree Pocket, beautiful part of Brisbane. Spin around a little here. There's the Pig Tree Pocket intersection on the Western Freeway, the crappiest traffic in the West. And uh, the fault starts about here. And it heads this way up under the Kenmore Shopping Centre, pretty much. And goes right up this little valley, which is Kenmore pretty much. And uh, heads up through the mountains. Now there's no visible signs of this in the landscape but it's there and we'll have a look at that. So we head up through these lovely hills, all done quite a bit of walking through here, across the uh, Mount Nebo Ridge, through Sanford, bit of a break there with an igneous intrusion, up through all these beautiful mountains and nearly up as far as Mount Byron. It's a really, really it's an interesting fault and uh, we'll go into why in a bit. So here we are, lovely valley, Kilcoy's over there, spin around, there's the old Glasshouse Mountains. Let's have a look at the geology of this. Stone 83, Port New Orleans Fisher with CBD and ready for the same. Stone 83, where visual ready. Well, folks, here's a geology map from the 1950s. And you can see there are two faults, the Normanby Fault, but the one we're going to look at today is the Kenmore Fault. I've got another video on the Normanby Fault. Here it is here, or the bottom end of it anyway. Now, this thing, you can see it in the geology. Let's have a look at the geology, of course. This is a macro view, looking right back. Um, the first of all, we have the Bunyophilites. And they're, they're Devonian, but we'll call them 400 million years, just to put a number on it. Over here, we have the Narrenly Fernvale beds. It's pretty much the same age, and not too dissimilar. And uh, just have a look. We've got some interesting stuff going on here, because we know the Norman Fault moves although it doesn't move very much, it actually does move. So if I wind back time and line up the, the geology, you can see this has moved about eight and a half kilometers in 200 million years. Those igneous intrusions are about 200 million years old. Earthquake map of Southeast Queensland, the faults stand out. You can see they happen around these faults as the stresses build and release over time. Let's have a look at the base of the fault. So we're just at the, you can see the centenary bridge there. There's the fault running right up through Kenmore. We're right at the bottom end of it here. The Brisbane River in the bottom there. I draw your attention to those Little green dots, little green thing. Now, this is Brisbane Tuff. This is the most westerly version of the Tuff in Brisbane itself. And uh, I'll show you, this is underneath the bridge for um, uh, Kenmore Road, crosses the freeway. That's Tuff, Brisbane Tuff. But the most important one here is Kenmore Road and Polara Street. This is diagnostic. Notice how the fault goes straight through it. Now, a little further north, we have an igneous intrusion as well. 
the fault runs straight through it, no offset. And if we go even further north, we've got the fault running straight through the Sanford stuff, straight through the uh, the Clear Mountain, uh, the um, Cedar Creek stuff, no offsets. It hasn't moved at all. So this is uh, something interesting. If this is moving, it isn't moving north or south. So back in the 1950s, they came up with this model. Here's the Kenmore Fault in the west, and you'll notice the offset is vertical. This is cross-sectional, looking through. 300 metres of vertical offset. So this thing's been going up in the air, but so slowly that it's er the erosion is just planing it down. So they went out to have a look. Department of Main Roads, Department of Transport went out, and they drilled this fault, and they drilled it, looking for the offset and the exact extent of the fault nice to know if you're going to be building roads tunnels etc etc and guess what they couldn't find it so it is obviously a boundary of the two rock types and there is obviously a fault there but as you can see with those igneous intrusions we talked about earlier it hasn't moved in 200 million years at all so if it is moving, it's moving upwards, but extremely slowly. So we don't worry about it. But let's have a look at what Bunya Philite looks like, which I call Brisbane Philite all the time. The difference between it and the Naran Lee beds is the amount of quartz in it, and it's a lot more foliated. Here's some of it down at, uh, oh, where's this? This is at uh, Red Hill. Look at the quartz in this. Beautiful amounts of quartz. Um, this quartz is radiolarian quartz, which formed on the ocean beds 4,000 metres underwater. And 400 million years ago, since then, it's been compressed and uplifted. The silica has been released. And uh, of course, when silica flows through rocks, it grabs minerals. And you can see this, this quartz is fairly mineralized. It's not just pure white. Pure white quartz, they call bull quartz. This stuff's got all sorts of mineralization in it. Manganese, probably, could have a bit of copper. Might even have a bit of gold in it. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So let's have a look at some more of this uh, Bunya Philite. This is over on the side of the southeast, uh, the um, Western Freeway. Uh, this is quite, quite metamorphosed here. It's been cooked just right near the Mount Cutha Quarry. This is, uh, again, more quartz veining. You see a lot of quartz veining in this Philite, wherever you see it in Brisbane. And a lot of Brisbane is built on this stuff. Let's have a look at this again on the Western Freeway. This is quite metamorphosed, as I said, because the uh, the um, Inogra intrusion came up underneath this and cooked it. Here's more of it. Beautiful quartz in this. I think this is over at Red Hill as well, actually. I uh, shot this quite a while ago. Yeah, it was Red Hill. I remember now. So what when we look at quartz veining in rocks, all of us geo-nerds, one thing comes to mind. What minerals came with it? You know, quartz comes up as a liquid, and it's not... If you can dissolve silica, you can dissolve all sorts of things. And uh, the old-timers knew about this. They might not have had the technology, but they knew. When you saw quartz veins, you got to live in a slab hut with the ugliest dog in the world because you're out there digging for, of course, this stuff. Yeah, that's what they were looking for. And it is not an accident that... Brisbane's gold fields are mainly contained in the Bunyafilite and the Bunyafilite where it has been intruded by igneous rocks and been cooked and all the geothermal fluids came up and brought with it gold. So that line through the middle of this is the Kenmore Fault and as you can see most of the gold mines are in the Bunyafilite. Not all of them but most of them. Well, folks, as you can see, Brisbane's a little complex on its geology. I like it. It's interesting. There's always something new. The Kenmore Fault. I wonder how many people in Kenmore know there's a Kenmore Fault. Actually, most of the geologists aren't quite sure they are either. But if you're looking for this stuff, or you're interested in where it can be found, or its brothers and sisters, you know, copper, uh, silver, platinum, all that stuff, well, around Brisbane, we know it's going to be mainly found as this geothermal deposits in quartz. 
And if you want geothermal deposits in rock that's 500 million years old that was once sedimentary, you got to look for some sort of igneous intrusion to provide the energy to bring that uh, material up. And these are the people that'll find it, the people on drilling rigs, the hard-working men and women out there drilling Australia. These people aren't fracking the country. That's, that's you know, shiny asses in offices in Sydney that are doing that. These people are out there earning a living and uh, doing a wonderful job. I have nothing but respect for them. So folks, if you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. If you got any friends you think might like this gear, please send them my way. The more the merrier. And uh, I'm going to give you a keep rocking and T-Rocks out, but you know, my son used to work on one of these rigs. There's an RC rig, not if this is a core rig. He worked on an RC rig up in North Queensland to the north of Huendon. You're talking 40 degree days in winter, that sort of stuff. And uh, he gave it away though, because uh, he just found it boring.